And now, here's Mike Muse with the political news. So let's get right to it and meet the candidates. That completes the opening statement. We're going to get right to it. On Sway in the Morning. All right, we got Mike Muse here. Avid chicken eater. <laughs> I do love chicken, actually. You've been eating chicken his whole life. <laughs> Absolutely. What kind of chicken you like, Mike? You like it fried, grilled? I like it all, man. I like roasted, grilled, rotisserie, baked, sautéed, you know, the whole nine. It's an old chicken eater, huh? Yeah, bro. You Do you eat the GMO chicken or you like it doesn't matter, do you? Well, I prefer free range. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't matter to you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, okay, all right. There's cool. a preference and then there's like what you would do. All right, what matters to you right now in in politics? (laughs) Man, Sway, there's so much to talk about in the news today. I mean, we have everything from the judicial blocks that's happening and the federal judges blocking a lot of Trump's orders. Uh, We have everything from Russia, Syria, and Iran. We have more women accusers, such as from Charlie Rose. Uh, We finally have a statement from Trump versus Roy Moore in Alabama. We have Congressman Conyers, who's also in the news for sexual misconduct and allegations. Uh, And then we also have Jared Kushner, who's also in the news, too, as well, as well as Haiti is also in the news, too, as well. So much to talk about, Sway, but I feel like it's important for us to talk about, to me, what is the most biggest story that impacts Americans on a day-to-day basis, and this whole issue of net neutrality. Uh, Sway, I'm pretty proud to say that we, I believe, broke this story here. We didn't break the story, but I believe that we were one of the mainstream outlets to begin to talk about net neutrality. We talked about this approximately two or three months ago Mm -hmm. on what net neutrality is, and we see legislation coming forward now as of yesterday um, from the FCC chairman, Chairman Pai, uh, with his sweeping reversal of all the Obama regulations regarding net neutrality. Can you explain in layman's terms what is net neutrality? Net neutrality is the freedom of information to flow equally uh, for all citizens of America to be able to access uh, broadband, Wi-Fi, internet access. So essentially, citizens, you should start paying attention right now if you like Netflix, if you like Hulu, if you're going to do your holiday shopping on Amazon, if you order Amazon Prime, if you are an entrepreneur, if you're a small company, if you're trying to do an app, if you're trying to start an app, uh, if you are living in a rural community where you already don't have access to Wi-Fi, if you're living in an urban community and you cannot afford the Wi-Fi packages and services, you should pay attention to this. What happened yesterday was Chairman Pai reversed all the, 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 of the appeals of what Obama did in order to create net neutrality. Essentially, Sway, what we're seeing is internet service providers versus internet Uh, systems and products that we love. So the internet service providers are AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, and then the internet services that we love, such as Hulu, Netflix, uh, Amazon, are basically now in in butting heads in a competition with each other. AT&T, Comcast, Verizon, and the likes of others now will have the ability to do preferential treatment on what systems are allowed to run smoothly quicker on the broadband. So if AT&T, Comcast, Verizon don't like necessarily Netflix or they have a Mm -hmm. similar product that they feel is in competition with Netflix, what then they can do in certain areas is slow Netflix down so that the streaming and things that we hate, which is that buffering that happens in the corner, the buffering will begin to occur and you will have a disruption in the quality of viewing and experiences that you have if you even get it all together. If individuals love ESPN and you're trying to watch the game on your app at a bar or you're Mm -hmm. sitting at a wedding or Mm -hmm. you're in a church and you're trying to get the score of the game, if you're, see it. Exactly. If yeah. you're with the ISP, so I'm going to generalize that category, internet service provider, which are the AT&T, Comcast, Verizon. So from now on, I'm going to say ISP citizens. If your ISP, ISP does not favor ESPN for whatever reason, they can actually slow that down. Why does this... Benef- how does this benefit the government one way or the other? So what happens is, so this goes into deregulations. And mm-hmm. as we all know, Republicans historically are all about less regulations. We talked about when it came in terms of hurricanes with Houston. We talked about the deregulations of some of those services that did the checks and balances for that chemical plant that went up in flames. Uh-huh. So President Trump and the Republican has always been about deregulations. So what these companies, such as the ISPs, which I just mentioned, they have said that this provides uh, doesn't provide an equal playing field for them to invest more in terms of infrastructure and to invest in their products. So essentially, this literally favors the ISP companies, AT&T, Comcast, Comcast. and Verizon. This legislation does not benefit whatsoever the average American citizens. Then to go further sway, what they require some of these companies to do is to pay extra in order to have the Netflix, your Hulu, your Amazon to be streamed through the broadband. So then we go into a situation called preferential treatment. So then they have to be able to pay in terms of preferential treatment in order 
order for your Netflix to run equally and smoothly. But then Swade also goes to another narrative and since it essentially begins to roll back what President Obama did and his previous FCC chairman was they made broadband sway an essential commodity. They made broadband as essential a part of your phone and yeah. your electricity. That's how they believe as vital it is. And Sway, when you think about that, if you're living in a rural community and you're living in an urban community and you're trying to advance yourself, maybe you're trying to get a job, how do you expect to be, uh, to find a job on the internet? How do you expect then to upload your resume? But you'll still be able to do those things, right? Sway, I, it's interesting enough, I'm going to talk from a personal perspective in terms of economics. As you and I, Sway, you are, we are very close. And mm -hmm. as you know me for so long, I never discuss numbers, right? Yeah. From anything, how much I pay for anything, yeah. how much rent, nothing. I never discuss any of that. You never even treat that. either. You never treat. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to talk about in the sense of even with me, within my, my internet, just to give, let you know my internet package and my cable, Sway, you just get too used to paying things on a monthly basis, not really realizing what you're doing. I'm paying $250 a month for my cable and for my Wi-Fi. Oh I finally called my internet service provider. I literally just woke up like, what am I paying for? And they broke down all the services I'm paying for. Sway, I'm literally paying $50 extra a month for a boost in Wi-Fi. As an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, having access to quality high-speed Wi-Fi is important for me. It's important as I do my work, as I talk on the radio, as, as I mess with big data, as I'm cutting, as I'm editing. If I don't have powerful Wi-Fi, that slows my production down. So imagine, Sway, if I'm paying 250 imagine with an individual, and, and this made me recognize my privilege. So imagine if a person in a rural community is unable to pay 250 Imagine if someone in the urban community is unable to pay $250, how then do they get access to broadband, which should be an essential services in order to A, start a small business to get uh -huh. themselves out of the situation, and then B, to find jobs to work their way out of economic development for their communities. I want to continue this conversation, but let's propose a question. You know, because it's all new to a lot of folks and, you know, grabbing all this information, you and I have spoke about it. It's been longer than three months. We actually, I feel like we brought this up last year at one point. I think we did. I yeah. think it's like definitely early in the year. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the question we can pose to the citizens in terms of how this will affect their everyday life or if they have, maybe they've had questions for you. Yo, if they had any <laughs> questions for me, please feel free to call us up. This is a very complicated, confusing issue. If you are concerned about your Netflix, your ESPNs, whatever app that you enjoy watching your branded entertainment on, give this, us a call. This will affect your everyday life. And then I also want to ask, how does this benefit the government or politicians to deregulate it? Yeah. Okay. I'll answer right. on the other side. Okay, cool. 888-742-3345. Uh, my part of yours, baby. Coming through you loud and clear. Loud and clear. Internet. Now more of the daily news on Sway in the Morning. Okay, we're talking about net neutrality and uh, some of the recent developments that ha uh, that's happened through the FCC uh, in terms of deregulation. And, um, you know, Mike Muse, I asked you, how does this benefit our government? Like, yeah. for this uh, one way or the other. Sway, this is one of those examples where I can unequivocally say that this has no upside for the government whatsoever. This literally just benefits the ISP companies that I mentioned, such as Verizon, AT, Comcast, and the likes of those and others. This just allows them to expand and invest more within themselves and then much within infrastructure, and this would not be passed on to the everyday consumer whatsoever. Some, you can say that this will, if the corporations are able to save more money and, and invest and gain more money, that then therefore that would be passed on the consumer but as we know, that never happens. They can say that the corporations will be able to pay more in taxes, and so then therefore they'll get more money back into the government. But as we know, the current tax legislation is proposing <laughs> a lowering of the corporate tax rate. Yeah. So th literally, this has no advantage for the government, literally whatsoever. It's the issue of the powerful lobbyists who are lobbying the Republicans who are pro-business and they are pro-deregulations to make sure that they get their bills and get this passed. So uh -huh. wait, this is a committee of five people, three Republicans and two Democrats. The FCC, most people don't even know what the FCC is. It's a small office over in the corner, over there in Washington, that people just don't pay attention to. And this is what happens about politics. And this is why it's important for citizens to pay attention now more so than ever on a day-to-day -day basis of what happened in politics. They were able to let this slide because we were asleep at the wheel. You know what I mean? We have not been following this because we don't, we're not paying attention to yeah. it, right? But this is an example of when money gets involved and how we can be asleep at the wheel. Vincent's, Vincent's in Detroit. Good morning, Vincent. How you doing? Hey Vince. Hey, good morning. What up, Vince? How y'all doing this morning? Doing, doing great. Getting this info, getting this game, man. What do you, you got a question? I was trying to read that this morning, but then I was thinking about uh, DJ's wonders. 
that beat that he did yesterday. I just hit him up on Twitter and stuff. But um, that that's scary, man, because when I'm working down south, they got gigabyte speeds down there. But down here in Detroit, we barely have any type of high-speed internet access and stuff. But we pay up the nose. But down south there area, it's real cheaper and stuff. So if that law goes into effect, what's that? Is it going to get better for, like, Comcast customers, AT&T customers, or is it going to get real bad <laughs> that's a, that's a really great question that you ask and so that will go for I, mean, I mentioned a little bit earlier in terms of the cherry picking so depend upon your region depend upon your state depend upon your city depend upon your internet service provider you will be able to either and then actually you may pay a premium for actually for even to go faster and then some may not even have access to it altogether so you just highlighted into something really interesting in the sense of rural versus urban versus other demographics in terms of access to broadband. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe even some of those companies, uh, Vincent, have this situation where they pay a higher premium in order for their content to go over certain allocated lines that are underground for the content to flow smoothly through. So what happened was, what well, he's also reversing sway as a Chairman Pai is, uh, underneath the Obama administration, they allowed this to be a commodity. And so it kind of began to set the conversation in motion in order for everyone to be protected and for this, the, the internet and broadband to access smoothly, equally, yeah. no matter what part of the country you're in, whether you're rural or urban. Uh, but now this undo, undoes all of that, undoes it. Okay, Vincent, thanks for your um, um, your question. Uh, we'll find we're going to give out Mike Muse's information. You could talk to him during the day. Steven in Wisconsin, what up, Steven? Big Steve, hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey. Steve Austin. Hey, what up, Steve? Hello, Steve. Go ahead, man. You want to make a comment? Uh, yeah, I, I have a pretty good idea of how to put this in perspective for the average American. Okay. And it's going to become a pay-to-play pay system in that they can do, they will have no governing body to say what data we can and cannot get. And now they can make their own choices. What do we see? What do we not see? Do we not see news articles from a certain site? Do we see them from a different site? A site that maybe the... Uh, ISP likes, or perhaps even in, you know, things that we need. Like, let's say you're lost in Manhattan. Oh, that'll be, you want to use, you want to use uh, Google Maps? That'll be 50 cents. If you're lost in North Dakota, out in rural middle of nowhere. Well, my, minus the money that if you use an Apple product or if you use an uh, Android product, you're already doing that. Like, the news is very uh, – I, if I look on Apple News, I'll get Washington Post or CNN or something. I won't get Fox News unless I specifically program that in right now. Also, for maps, you automatically get the Apple map. You have to actually download the Google map. So besides the money, what's, what's going to be the difference then? How can you say hmm. besides the money? I just answered. I, I kind of just laid that out. What the difference is. So you're talking about a specific app. So apps. You're talking about the Apple app. That is an algorithm that Apple has. I can't address whether I don't uh, participate in that. So I can't let you know if Fox is the algorithm. But Fox is an app in the App Store. Is it not? Do they not allow Fox channel? Is there Fox look, app you, not in the up, Apple Store? If you look up Apple News right now, look at what the articles for each of the top headline stories under. If you scroll to the left on your iPhone, look right now and see which newspaper that covers mm -hmm. their top stories. That's what, that's what I'm saying. All right, that's a, that's a story, but this goes to a larger issue. So this regulation isn't about stories and articles. This regulation is about access to broadband, access to Wi-Fi, access to content, and preferential treatment of content, and apps that you enjoy, such as Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, that requires large broadbands. That is what the issue is. So we're not. It's bigger than an article, but right? That, and what but, this caller this is talking, guy just said, that, I'm just this asking this guy specifically it, what he just said. It, what this caller is talking wouldn't about. Wouldn't that fall it, under access to content what let, let's let's just one second so what's happening caller what you're discussing is smaller uh blogs and smaller websites will be affected by this because of the fact of they will uh could receive preferential treatment if they do pay more so you are correct there is a pay to play i wouldn't go as far as we don't know what the formula would be in terms of what you just mentioned in terms of 50 cents etc but i see where you're going with that there but there overall this is a pay to play which i was referring to and i talked about preferential treatment so there will be this larger narrative of will or they say you know the resistance is happening and organizing for nonprofit groups yeah. organize on the internet so then at this point companies may then choose to cherry pick what gets populated up to the top versus those who are considered preferential treatment if you will so again it destabilizes I, 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 I'm the quality about of the money it. too though 
you know, you, yeah. I don't know how you can say minus the money. Like, it, it, well, there's got to be a benefit too. If you have yeah. the money, the speeds are going to be faster, and you're going to get more content more more than likely. If and plus, I know that also we're, cellular wise, prices have gone down on your cell phones because I can get a, I get a unlimited. They, I'm, yeah, I had unlimited to start with Verizon, mm -hmm. then they took that away. Now they offer it again, and actually prices have gone down and everything with more competition. So I don't know if that might be the so case. I'm going to talk well. about cell phones next week because cell phone is completely separate from the broadband situation that we're talking about right now. So we're talking two different two different things, two different talking, things. Okay, and this is yeah. what happens in, in the arguments that usually it happen. Gets it, get, confused. it gets confusing. Okay. But so we have companies, companies, but they're the same company. But two okay. different products. This is two different products, two different sectors, two different areas, and two different accesses. Because then I'm going to talk about next week with this FCC chairman is doing is eliminating Lifeline, which goes to cellular. So we'll talk about cellular next week. Ryan is a cybersecurity engineer. Okay, okay Ryan. Okay, All right, and okay. he's on the line from Virginia, and he wants to weigh in. Go ahead, Ryan. Good morning. Hey, Ryan. Good morning, y'all. Hey, you Ryan. How are you? Ryan, you notice how I saved you for last, baby. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you, you yeah, call. You, you call. Guys. You're Carl Lewis in the four by one hundred. You got to bring home the gold. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm going to tell you right now, though, you know, I'm going to preface this by saying I know the SEC. Chair. I live in Northern Virginia. I've worked in D.C. at the White House my whole life, or 10 years, just about. I'm done with that place, though. Um, and I know the new SEC chair personally when he was working at the Senate. And, and there's a lot of things that are happening. And you guys have touched on a lot of different topics because, and it's clear that it's because of the lack of understanding of what is going on and how the technology works. Okay, the Net Neutrality Act, a lot of it deals with residential and commercial um, Internet access, right? It is a commodity. It's just like the reason why I can't – there's certain restaurants that are down south and there's certain restaurants on the east coast and there's not, you know, In-N-Out Burger out on the west coast. People go out there and they're like, oh, my God, In-N-Out Burger. You know, it's the same thing with how the Internet works and how – and it is completely separate from cellular. Um but the, the problem with the Net Neutrality Act is people need to understand that they're not going to have a Comcast, a Verizon, an AT&T, and a Sprint right next to each other, right? There's got to be some competition, and it all comes down to infrastructure, right? Infrastructure is a huge deal. If you want to stream Hulu and Netflix and you want to you want to Amazon Prime Video, absolutely everything, you need the infrastructure and the data centers to house that stuff. Right? If you sit there and you drop, everybody wants to pay 50 bucks for internet. Well, guess what? Where do you think that money goes? Uh, you, you're not paying for the infrastructure. A lot of inner cities now are starting to build Wi-Fi that's accessible to the whole city, but that takes money and that takes infrastructure. And then when you pay an extra $50 for a boost in Wi-Fi, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where you, it's just like a sushi chef. He's going to go out and he's going to buy the best knives that don't dull, that don't rust, because he wants to make the best sushi. Well, small business owners need to pay extra money if they want absolutely fast internet, right? And all these people talking about, well, you know, I don't like buffering and stuff like that. I mean, come on. It, it, you're talking about you want to watch instant movies on demand how, What that doesn't really have anything to do with you trying to find a job on the internet, right? There's not a lot of bandwidth that's required for surfing, for job sites and monster.com and places like Dice um, if you have a clearance. There, it doesn't require a lot of bandwidth. So there's a lot of false arguments that go in there and say, well, what am I going to do? I'm not going to find a job. Well, that's not true, right? That is not true. And that's not what the Net Neutrality Act is doing. What it's doing is it's eliminating the 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 status quo. And it is setting a bar that says, hey, mm -hmm. if you want access to fast Internet, it, some places you are going to have to pay extra just because the infrastructure is not there. You talk about Detroit, you know their infrastructure is horrible. Right. You talk about Michigan, their infrastructure right now, I mean, just even the physical infrastructure for water and stuff like that, it's horrible. What makes people think that they're going to have the best Internet? Mm hmm. Uh, well, so there's a couple of things that we need to talk about in addressing that scenario right there. One, oh. infrastructure isn't necessarily water. So infrastructure in this scenario means the underground cable and wiring that's being affected. Two, what the caller mentioned was about jobs. That's absolutely false. This does affect your jobs and your ability to browse. If you are on, I, I don't know, I, I haven't searched for a job and I don't know how long, but if you are on monster.com, if you are on linkedin.com, those require broadband. That requires a put on of data that goes to big data sway, which we has often been talking about on this show. If you don't have access to 
the data and big data and Wi-Fi in order to bring that data through. Mm-hmm. That is a challenge that rural Americans have. Upstate New York and here right now, students in Albany, they don't have Wi-Fi in their homes. They literally sway, have to go to the library, sit in the parking lot and access Wi-Fi from the parking lot in order for them to do their homework, in order to do the college applications. Because now, as you know, and I'm sure you know Caller as well, yeah. that the colleges now are going to universal applications. So you can literally yeah. pull down yeah. one application. Now students sway are actually because some students can't afford laptops. Some individuals can't afford desktops. What are they doing? They're using it on their phone, which is through how their Wi-Fi, which is provided through where? Their broadband, which is provided for the where is the infrastructure? Underground. And so that's exactly how they're doing it. So if you're pulling and typing in data, mm-hmm. you need powerful Wi-Fi to do that. So if you also need Wi-Fi to fix your resume, you also need Wi-Fi to go to LinkedIn. Yeah. So that, what the caller is mentioning, is absolutely false. What the caller also mentioned, too, as well, just a second, I'll let you speak, caller. What the caller also mentioned, too, as well, was that uh, he said there's infrastructure is needed and you should expect to pay for Wi-Fi if you want the Netflix, you want to see a buffering. That is also not true in this scenario. What happens is these ISPs, the AT&T, the Verizon, the Comcast, they're able to cherry pick what they can prefer. So if one is in partnership or one acquires Netflix, yeah. let's just say, because right now Netflix isn't acquired by anyone. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, citizens, this is not happening. It's not in the conversation. This is literally, for example, purposes only. If a and buys Netflix, let's just say they acquires them 10 years from now. Okay. Netflix competition is Amazon Prime and Hulu, right? So then what AT&T then would do is bring the speed up of Netflix and then what sway? Slow Hulu down. Mm-hmm. Slow Amazon Prime down. The tr- uh, trans, uh, Transparent, which we talked about on Monday in terms of that actor, that will be slowed down. So it is there. These companies do have the infrastructure already. This investment isn't to make the infrastructure better that isn't there. So we have to be clear in how we talk about infrastructure. It's not about water. It's not about like, utilities. It's not about electricity. It's not anything above ground. This literally is the wiring. Okay, so Ryan, this is what I want you to do, if you don't mind, Ryan. Um, uh, follow Mike Muse, and then you guys continue this conversation on Mike Muse's timeline. I want everybody, uh, Richard in Georgia, Sammy in Connecticut, Mark in Rhode Island, Drew in Toronto. I want to keep the conversation going. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a new conversation for a lot of us, for most Americans. We're starting to find out more information. Um, I love the fact that Ryan, the cybersecurity engineer, called in. You're a citizen, Ryan. That's way in the morning. All right. And then if you guys have any more yep. questions about uh, net neutrality and what's going on, hit up Mike Muse directly. Yo, hit me up, man. I'll be on this all day for the rest of the week. I'm going to talk about cell phone service and data next week. I'm going to talk about Lifeline and how the FCC chairman is getting rid of that and the implications from rural to urban communities as a whole. Hit me up at I am Mike Muse, M U S and Sam E on Twitter and on Instagram. Oh. Heather. I'm about to go pull out my old VHS player, my dollop phone. I'm going back to the basics way. The newspaper, I'm going back to the real, y'all. I got sports up next. Shape 05. Good morning.